Hi everyone, my name is Ben Savoy and I'm the District Forester for Barry, Allegan, and Ottawa Conservation District. And today I'm excited to talk to you about a question I get from landowners all over the state of Michigan. Should I harvest my woods? This is a complex question. Today we're going to break it down into bite-sized pieces so that we can make it more manageable. Uh, so first thing that we need to consider when we're thinking about harvesting a woods is what are your management goals. And this can be just about anything from timber management, if you want to make an income off of your timber, um, for wildlife habitat, if you want to make it more accessible for game species, and make it better hunting land for a game season, um, or even if you just want to use it to get away from everything, uh, get away from the busy modern life and just step back into the natural beauty of the woods. Uh, these are all very important things to consider and should be taken into account when you're planning a timber harvest. Every forest is a little bit different and your needs are going to be just as unique, so they can and should be accounted for for forest management. Now, if you're still on the fence about whether you should take out any trees of your forest or not, there are three main things that you should consider before breaking out the chainsaws. Your site, your local markets, and your expectations. So when I'm referring to the site, that means more than just the physical location. It's also the species that are present and the various parts of the environment that impact the growth of trees. So gathering up as much information as you can about the species that are present, the history of management on the property, anything that you can get about the property is going to help impact these future decisions. If you have no idea where to start, that's okay. There's a lot of resources that are available to landowners to help them build up this information base on their property. First of all, there's foresters like myself, uh, district foresters that provide on-site assessments for no charge. Uh, we help not only get you an idea of what's currently out in your woods, but some advice on how to reach your goals. Uh, there are also uh, private industry foresters. These are called consultant foresters. Uh, who can be hired to write management plans, which are very thorough descriptions of the property and can provide prescriptions based on what your needs are, what's currently there, and what the best management practices are to reach them. Uh, both are great options for people that are just starting out, but there are some things that you can do on your own. First, you can take a walk in your woods see what's out there for yourself. If you can ID species, that's great. It gives us a great basis to work things out. Um, and in broad terms, we're looking for the size and distribution of the trees. So if you look behind me, there's plenty of these large uh, pine trees. And if that's something that you wanted on the property, that's something that could be uh, accounted for. Or if you wanted more pine trees on your property, that is also something that could be accounted for. We just need something in writing something that you're thinking about that's on your mind so that we can work together and build a better forest. There's often another question that comes up when we're talking about forest management, and that is, how much is this tree worth? Now, the, the smart answer is whatever people are willing to pay, but that answer is often not satisfying. Uh, it, there is a lot of things that go into the local markets and the prices of trees within them. It can vary from state to state, region to region, even company between company. And this can be really frustrating for landowners that are just getting started and want to know how much their, how much their forest is worth. So this is not another value that, uh, that foresters can help provide. We are in contact with mills, loggers, various companies that are looking for specific things. So instead of you calling around the whole state trying to find one buyer for your property, we have a list of people who are looking for various species or uh, have a particular type of job in mind, um, saving you a lot of time and potentially making you money a lot sooner. For example, in my service area, black walnut is the most valuable tree species by a large margin, with oaks at the time of recording being in a very far second. 
Now this could be much different depending on where you are in the state or what time of year that you're planning on harvesting. It's something that is uh, variable not only by species but by time and place because of the costs associated with moving equipment um, and what people are looking to buy at that time. Uh, if you don't have these species, don't worry. It's not like you can never get a harvest done on your property. It does make it a bit more challenging, but every tree species has some value and can be used and used as uh, gathering interest for loggers in the area. Timber sale contracts not only protect you as the log seller, but also the buyer. These are mutual agreements that are basically just stating what the buyer are, is going to remove from the property, how they're going to do it, and what you are going to be uh, paid for the timber taken off the property. So these protect you in that you know exactly what's going to be taken off the, the property. Uh, they make sure that it's up to your standards, and they make sure that it is uh, that, that you are not liable for the operations that the, the buyer is conducting should any accidents happen. So, the buyer is protected because there is no misunderstandings with this agreement. It's all laid out in a way that you have to come to a coordinated mutual agreement. And also, they know that they are going to be getting everything that they paid for. Forestry happens on a time scale that is a bit longer than what we're used to. So, these sort of harvests happen maybe once or twice in a landowner's lifetime. This makes it very important to get it done the first time and make sure that the contract is easily understandable by all parties. These sort of decisions have a large impact on what's to come, and you want to make sure that you capitalize on all the benefits that they have. Before making a cut, you may want to look into some resources that can help you get the most out of your timber management activities. For starters, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, a branch of the USDA, has some cost sharing available for landowners that are looking to do a whole host of areas timber management activities. This includes, but is not limited to, a hiring a forester to write the management plan, removing invasive species, or planting trees. The American Tree Farm System is a great way for landowners who are new to forest management to get connected with a community of like-minded individuals. Tree Farm is made up of forest landowners and forestry professionals that are committed to a higher standard of sustainability. Tree Farm also helps you stay connected by having certified inspectors that make sure that your management plan and your property is maintaining high, rigor, uh, high and rigorous standards of sustainability. It's a way that you can stay up to date on the best practices for forest management while also leaving your legacy as a forest steward. So with a uh, frame of mind looking at a long-term investment look at a, uh, at a forest, there are ways that you can make a monetary benefit from that. Taxes on timber income are usually reported as standard income, but you don't have to that way. And going through these processes and getting into these organizations can help justify it as more of a long-term investment. So timber taxes is, is a very complex topic, a topic that deserves its own workshop. So we'll just leave it short for brevity here, but income gained from a timber harvest that you have planned and accounted for in a management plan contract and gone through all the best management practices, you can report this as long-term capital gains, which is taxed at a much lower rate than standard income. We've covered a wide range of questions on this topic, and I'm sure that we've just scratched the surface. If you have any more questions for me related to this topic or any other forestry topic, feel free to contact me. I'll be leaving my contact information after this video, as well as some links to some useful uh, resources that you might find helpful in making this decision. I hope you found all this helpful and informative, and thank you for your interest in forest conservation.